This class will be concerned with interpersonal skills. Now, interpersonal skills are vital skills in many situations. These are the skills that enable us to communicate effectively with colleagues, to recognize our respective skill sets, to recognize what we can do well and what we can't do well, and what our weaknesses are and what our strengths are, and, and it enables us to find channels of communications which um, allow us to communicate and work effectively together. So interpersonal skills are very important. It's what connects us. Having good interpersonal skills allows individuals to effectively interact with each other. The interpersonal skills allow us to come together to uh, discuss issues and deal with issues and get over any differences that we may have. It enables us to uh, deal with each other effectively and amicably. Interpersonal skills varies from communication skills to social skills. This skill is vital for many job roles within organizations. Communication skills are very important in business. Uh, communication skills must be such that enables us to uh, get the work done. It must enable us to, to process information, to process data, to convert into information perhaps uh, is a better way of putting it. But we must be able to deal with the data, deal with the information and act on it. And that means communication skills. And the communication skills to be effective must be understood. Which means we must recognize the varying set of skills all sorts of skills within the organization and our own interpersonal skills means we're able to accommodate that variation right across the organization. Some people working for the organization may not have good language skills. Some people may not have good numeracy skills. Some people may not have good communication skills in general. Or their personalities may be very introvert. All sorts of situations arise. But interpersonal skills, a good set of interpersonal skills, enables us to communicate effectively at all levels. Thus, that's what's meant by a good set of interpersonal skills. Generally speaking, interpersonal skills are developed subconsciously throughout life and developed from experiences. Generally speaking, we, we we practice our interpersonal skills right throughout, from, from, from school days right through, uh, through various jobs, through various work experiences and various life experiences. We know what works, we know how to treat people, we know how to listen, we know how to pick up information and how to respond. And we know how to do this effectively without causing uh, bad feelings or without causing uh, any adverse emotions. So interpersonal skills tend to be acquired subconsciously. They're not taught at school. Uh, in a sense they can't be taught at school. They are what we know to be right. These are the skills that we know that work. Now the importance of interpersonal skills. Well it can, they can certainly be used to help individuals to manage stress. Interpersonal skills, once we're aware of our own set of interpersonal skills, we, we, we've got a set of skills and somebody else has got a set of skills and we've got this interpersonal set of skills between us, then there's less stress in the situation. We can communicate effectively. We can talk to each other. We can reason and we can, we can isolate problems and find solutions to problems because we're able to communicate our our thinking effectively. So there is less stress. Stress tends to develop when there is a breakdown in communications and when um, when the task seems too big and 
one person feels that he or she is expected to do too much within the, the given time frame and there's too much pressure. Well, talking about it, communicating it, and dealing with it openly and honestly can help to manage the stress. It can certainly resolve conflict. When people have issues uh, in work, there is a situation of conflict, then a good set of interpersonal skills, ones which recognizes body language, recognizes the language itself that's been used, recognizes the situation, uh, a good set of skills at that, at that moment can help to diffuse any uh, escalation of the problem. It can resolve the conflict. And it helps us to communicate with others, which is very important. As I said earlier, communications is how the business runs. The communication uh, structure of the business is the business to a large extent. That's what the business does. It, it takes orders from the customers and then the orders are translated into finished products which are dispatched perhaps to the, to the customer. And right throughout that process there is information flows and understanding the information flows is the the job of the interpersonal skills that's where interpersonal skills smooths out all of the the problems and the issues uh, everybody can can see clearly as to what is required because there is a good set of skills communicating the issues and resolving issues as they arise and there's increased uh, understanding between the peers between people at the same level because interpersonal skills means that they are able to communicate, they're able to deal with each other, they're able to work together they find it a pleasant experience so there's a greater understanding between them now in a professional context, interpersonal skills helps us get a job, communicate with, with other colleagues, um, promotion prospects and personal effectiveness is enhanced. So we have a better chance of getting a good job with a good set of interpersonal skills when we can recognize differences in people and we can accommodate those differences and we can communicate and work well together despite the differences so we can get a job we can communicate with others and with colleagues and because we have these capacities we have a better prospect of promotion and uh, a better career in front of us in a personal context interpersonal skills helps us manage relationships and social interactions we're aware that people are different and we're able to accommodate that so we are sensitive to to others we're sensitive to the situation in which we find ourselves we are uh, we're careful as to what we say and how we act and we try to ensure that our behavior our gestures our body language and what we say is appropriate for the time and place we find ourselves. Now, what does interpersonal skills involve? Well, in fact, it involves quite a long list. We can imagine a long set of skills, interpersonal skills. So I'm just going to give you, give you them all at once and we'll just go through them quickly. This may not be an exhaustive list, there may be others that you can you can come across and, and add to the list, but uh, what we've come up with here is we have good communication skills, as we've been talking about. We've good listening skills. That's important. It's important to be able to listen to others and to understand what's been said and the importance of what's been said, the relevance of what's been said. We have assertiveness, but not, not too much. We, we're not we're not arrogant and we're not forceful we're just gently assertive that 
the point we're trying to make, there is a logic in the point, and it's based on experience, and it's based on research, and it's based on careful thinking. If that's the case, then we can assert it. But being sure, or trying to ensure, I should say, that others come along with us, that others understand what we're trying to do, and the importance of what we're trying to do. So it's, if you like, gentle assertiveness. Number four is social skills. Generally, knowing how to behave when in, in a social context. Knowing how to behave um, at a wedding or at a funeral. Or knowing how to behave um, in, in public places. Because we are representing the business and we are also representing ourselves and our future prospects. So having good social skills is important. Being polite, being well behaved, being well spoken. Delivering ourselves in that sense is important. And having verbal skills. Being able to choose the, the right words at the right time. Being able to summarize points and arguments and being able to distill out of what's been said the essence of what's been said taking everything that's been said in some address to work out the core message having the, the verbal skills to do it to work out exactly what was meant and being able to resolve um, problems conflict resolution there's always going to be issues, the chances are, in any organisation, within departments. There may be personal problems between members of staff who are in disagreement over whatever, or, or excessive competitiveness for some new position that's been offered within the department, or uh, there may be aggression between one department and another, or whatever. It's trying to find solutions to this, because the realization that everyone is working together for the organization must rule the day and therefore to resolve the conflict requires in good interpersonal skills problem solving is the same um, problem solving recognizing that perhaps you the problem solver do not have the skills to do it, don't have the skills to solve the problem. But recognizing that means that uh, that you, the person with the problem, is able to recruit other people from the department to help solve the problem. So if, if it's a problem within the company, other people within the department may come to the rescue. And getting their agreement to help and getting them to contribute towards the solution will require interpersonal skills. The same happens in decision making. Decision making may require wide scale agreement between several members of the business. Well getting that agreement will require interpersonal skills. It may also be a situation of almost bargaining. People will say well I will do it if, if this happens. Other people say, well, I'll do it if that happens. Now, it's trying to find a solution to all of those competing demands. That is the sign of having good interpersonal skills. And that, that links to nine, negotiations. Being able to negotiate, being able to, to give and to accommodate differences and to, to give ground, uh, to, to agree to, to something and uh, in the expectation that something else will happen. Trying to find a way to deliver a product or deliver on a promise or deliver on a situation that perhaps may look almost impossible but negotiation skills may be brought to bear on it. could also be the case that there are presentation skills uh, that require interpersonal skills. Presentation skills uh, it's important for the presenter, let's say it's a business presentation, it's important for the presenter to be aware that the audience, some of, some of the audience may not be technically qualified, some of the audience may have poor computing skills, some of the audience may have poor language skills or poor 
poor numeracy skills. So it's understanding all of those differences, trying to make a presentation that suits everyone, whilst at the same time not boring the more alert and the more, if you like, intelligent members of staff, the more educated members of staff. So making a presentation that is inclusive, it takes everybody, but at the same time is interesting to everybody. Now that is a real skill. That is a very difficult skill to achieve. Um, the same with using computer technology, um, having the interpersonal skills, uh, using programs and communications via emails, for example, and video conferencing and so on. It's, in, it's a question of understanding the importance of interpersonal skills in those contexts. Now, the importance of verbal and non-verbal communications, because there are two types. First of all, communication skills. Well, communication skills is the exchange of information between individuals or groups of people. It's a vital skill which is used almost all the time in all activities. Communication skills is the exchange of information. That's what communications is. Uh, communications may be uh, it may be contaminated or, or disrupted in the communications process. Uh, something called noise may affect the communications and the quality of the communications. Noise is anything which distorts, distorts the message. But communication skills is the exchange of information uh, between individuals or groups of people. Effective communications between individual, individuals articulates respect for each other's opinions, uh, effective negotiation and persuasion. So effective communication uh, respects differences of, of opinion and it's, it's effective in negotiations. It's necessary in, in negotiations to have effective communications. It's clear that both sides must understand the message, must understand what's been said. And communication skills are essential to persuade uh, people in, in companies or in politics or in whatever it is. It's good communication skills are necessary to persuade them to uh, subscribe to a certain idea, to come along with a, a certain idea. So communication is the basic building blocks of your development. If you take your career then it's essential that you, the individual, must have good communication skills. If you haven't got that, you can't communicate effectively what you're trying to do. The, the chances are you're not going to have a good career set of prospects. The skill allows individuals to effectively express their opinions to people whilst using appropriate gestures and language. So communications, um, if it's face to face, then body language, gestures, as well as the spoken word are very important in order to communicate effectively the message that is intended. And it's important that the other person receives the message and understands exactly what is said, that the message has not been distorted in the process of communications. As I said earlier, there is no noise in the system. Noise is anything which distorts the message. It doesn't literally mean noise as we understand the word. It means anything which distorts the message. Now there are two types of communication as point three has suggested. Um, there's verbal and non-verbal communications. Now let's look at um, verbal communications. 
The concept of verbal communications relies on the effective use of sound and language to express a message and ideas. So verbal communications is using sound and language to express the idea, to express the message. That's verbal. It's a way of communicating using sound. It forms the basic need for effective teaching and learning. We use it a lot in education. We talk to each other. We go to a class and the teacher talks, the lecturer talks, the tutor talks. And it communicates a message. Verbal communication works alongside non-verbal communication in order to in order for the, communi uh, the communication to be effective. Now, so verbal communication and non-verbal communication augment each other. They, they, they go hand in hand. Uh, the body language of the presenter, for example, in, let's say, in a lecture. The body language uh, suggests the importance, perhaps, of a particular concept. If the lecturer is gestic gesticulating a lot, using his or her hands a lot to emphasize a certain point, that suggests that that point is very important. So body language is very important in the context of communications. Verbal communication consists of public speaking, delivering a message to a group of people, and interpersonal communication is the exchange of information which involves taking and active, or of, of talking I should say, and an active uh, listening. So interpersonal communication is the exchange of information involving talking and active listening. Interpersonal is, is between people. Public speaking is delivering a message to a group of people. Generally speaking, public speaking is one way. One person delivering a message to a group. Interpersonal communication is the exchange of information where people between them exchange ideas. That's interpersonal. So somebody makes a point and somebody else agrees or disagrees. That's interpersonal, which is quite distinct from public. The purpose of um, verbal communication is to pass on information to other individuals. Uh, maybe a simple word or an in-depth conversation. But the idea of verbal communication is to pass on information. It's as simple as that. Appropriate language and emotion is vital to pass on a message which could uh, be to inform, inquire, discuss or argue. But appropriate language and emotion is vital. And generally speaking, it should be neutral. It should be language that is not aimed at arousing emotions and anger and uh, upsetting people. It should be neutral in that sense. So, passionate language about issues designed to get people worked up is not very constructive, generally speaking. So communication should be determined, it should be straightforward, and the language should be easy to understand, and the message should be clear. And the, the core of the message should be clearly understood. The main barrier to effective communication is misunderstanding. This can be due to differing opinions, um, your use of words, and also language barriers. So misunderstandings can arise in a variety of ways, but differences of opinion are a major source of misunderstanding. When people are committed to certain ideas, 
then there's a misunderstanding. Uh, people misunderstand what each other is trying to do. It can be due to a whole variety of reasons. For example, the language barriers may depend on levels of education. Some people may not understand the words or the vocabulary that's been used or the precise meaning of the words. And that also could be related to social status. Um, accountants will use certain language that others may not use and legal people, solicitors or lawyers may use different language and engineers may use different language and um, so it, it's it, there may be differences but also lifestyle. People may not simply have interest in language and may not have a big vocabulary. They may have be more interested in uh, watching sports on television and have not developed their language skills. They, they don't read a lot perhaps. Could be cultural background. Um, misunderstandings because of cultural background can be quite uh, quite deep. People say well in my culture we don't believe this or in my culture we don't do that and there's a source of misunderstanding how to get around this problem, how to get people all moving together. And there could also be geographic issues, um, accent. They're speaking the same language but it sounds different and they're not quite sure what is meant and some words in some areas may have slightly different meaning. So there may be issues there. Now let's look at nonverbal communications. Now when we interact with others through wordless signals, we call this nonverbal communications. We're interacting with others, but we're doing it without words. We're interacting without words, so we're we're using nonverbal communications. This could be gestures, facial gestures, or we could be using our hands to communicate. Effective communication requires an understanding of nonverbal communications, which ranges, as I said, from body gestures to eye contact. So, nonverbal communication runs uh, across many areas. It's very difficult to interpret it and to interpret, and there are wide geographic misunderstandings of body language. In certain cultures, in certain countries, a gesture could be seen as complimentary, whereas in another country it could be seen as very rude or very insulting. So there's a wide range of uh, interpretations to body language and for that reason it must be dealt with uh, with care. It is important however, it allows us to understand individual reactions. That's providing we understand the body language, we understand the gestures that are being used. As I said, if we don't, it can lead to even greater misunderstanding. Now the types of nonverbal communications, well, as I said, facial gestures. Um, facial expressions are universal throughout all cultures. Nearly all cultures we pull faces, but it's what the face that's pulled means that's imp that's the problem. There's not universal agreement amongst social scientists and psychologists and so on about what's meant by certain facial gestures. In one society, as I said, it's a sign of happiness. In another society, it's a sign of pain. Although a smile is a smile no matter where you go, I guess, and a frown is a frown. But within within those extremes, there are gestures which uh, could be uh, discomfort and there can be facial expressions which shows a great deal of uh, contentment with what River said. It's very difficult and in order to read the body language it's necessary to know that particular culture and that particular geographic area. Body language also uh, is 
a way of nonverbal communications. Um, posture, hand movements, the way you walk and the way you stand. Um, body language is very difficult to interpret, but it can communicate. It can communicate uh, how the person feels about a certain situation or about uh, what's been said. And understanding the body language can be important. Hand-eye contact. Um, our hand-eye movements can impart how we feel about certain things. Someone rolling their eyes could be showing that they are pretty much fed up with what's been said. Um, if people are rubbing their faces, it may mean that they're very bored with what's been said. It depends. Uh, again, but it's important to recognize that these are non-verbal types of communication. It's a powerful communication mechanism and allows for better communication between individuals. It includes, as I said earlier, it includes pointing and hand movements and um, expressing interest and attraction through eye contact. So, but it's, in, it's important to be able to interpret body language and non-verbal communications and it is very very difficult. Um, continuing this for a second, well, touch. We receive a wealth of information through touch. This includes giving hugs, types of handshake, tap on the shoulder, uh, physical aggression such, such as fighting. Let's touch. Uh, people start to punch each other. Uh, they're not very happy with each other, obviously. <clears throat> but someone tapping somebody on the shoulder and saying, well done. That's a non-verbal type of communication. Just a tap on the shoulder means you've done very well. Again, keep going back to it, but it depends on the society, the culture, the area, and so on. We also have personal space. We try to maintain appropriate physical distance between individuals, and that's essential. Um, in Western Europe, uh, we tend to stand a couple of elbow lengths away from each other. We don't stand too close. In some societies, people may uh, want to stand closer, and that's part of their culture. Um, physical space can articulate affection, intimacy, but it can also articulate aggression and power. When people stand too close, they could be becoming quite aggressive. But generally speaking, we have to respect people's personal space and try to work out what their personal space is. They don't want people standing too close to them. And the tone of voice. Uh, the way people speak um, when they're angry or with affection, with fear or with confidence, all different tones of voice. And when listening to somebody speak, if they're angry, they will have a certain tone, a loud, quite sharp tone of voice. With fear, it'll be quiet and uh, softly spoken, perhaps, because it's fearful. Now these are various types of non-verbal communication. As I said, and I keep saying it, um, it does depend on the society, it depends on the geographic area, which country it's in, or what the culture of that country is, and so on. So it has to be interpreted. But Non-verbal communications is seen as important. It's an important way of communicating, as well as the verbal. Now, examples of communication. Well, meetings, good way of sharing opinions and ideas, having a meeting. Presentations, workshops, teaching and learning. 
um, these provide places where learning can take place and communications take place. Um, and it should enable some sort of interpersonal communication where questions and answers and ideas are floated between people and discussed. So it's a good form of communication. Conversation is an example of communications where two or more individuals uh, meet and, and they have the talk. They have, a, they, have, they have a conversation about um, some issue and they exchange ideas and they exchange criticisms and resolve issues and discuss things in general. So conversations are uh, places where communications meet. Now effective communications, well communications can be greatly enhanced if you show respect for others' opinions. That's very important. Respect for others' opinions means that there's a better chance of communications being effective and of getting a good, a good outcome. Ensuring that you consider your message before you speak. It's always a good idea to make sure what you're saying is relevant. If it's germane to the, to the discussion that's taking place. If it's irrelevant, then people will consider the contribution to be ineffective and a waste of time and it just annoys. It annoys the others. And also, if it's not well considered, it may upset people's, uh, people's opinions. It may upset what they feel or what they think. It may be insulting. It may, may not be the intention to insult, the intention was to, to make a point, but as it turned out it may be construed as insulting because it wasn't thought through at the start. It's always advisable to speak clearly and choose the words carefully so that communications is clear and the other side are receiving the message clearly. If it's a face-to-face -face situation, use appropriate non-verbal communication while expressing the language, but minimize the non-verbal communication if possible. It's not wise to be very animated and jump up and down and wave your arms around too much. Uh, that's not good practice. Try to deliver the message as professionally as possible. Effective communications with some body language, some non-verbal communications, but not too much, just gentle. Most importantly, um, listen to others before you speak. Uh, give uh, the others a chance to express themselves. So try to take the people that are being addressed into account. They have opinions, they have ideas. Try to listen to what's been said and try to measure what you're going to say against what's already been said and what uh, the issues that have been identified, the objections, the points that have been made, the, the feelings that have been expressed. Try to take all of these into account. So listen to the others and then give your opinion. So we've now looked at the ideas of verbal communications, using words to communicate, and non-verbal, body language and gestures and so on. And we've looked at the areas where communications uh, is usually encountered at meetings and conversations and so on. And that's all I'm going to do in this session. So we're going to leave it at that and say thank you for watching.